Lyft has decided to donate a whopping $14 million to an effort to defeat uh, or for an effort to essentially reclassify workers in the state of Massachusetts as private contractors. And the reason why they want to do this is to do away with certain labor protections that typical workers, yes, believe it or not, there are some labor protections that typical workers are able to benefit from. Now, this is essentially an effort to ensure that Massachusetts follows through on what California has done to app based workers, individuals in the gig economy. And it has been absolutely devastating. This followed the passage of Proposition 22 in California. It allowed for Uber, Lyft, Instacart, all these app based companies to reclassify their workers as private contractors. And that allowed them to avoid having to pay for certain benefits, it allowed them to avoid having to pay them minimum wage. Let me give you some details here. So what exactly does um, this entail? Such a policy would free companies like Lyft from having to pay a minimum wage or provide certain workplace rights, protections and benefits that employees receive. While proponents of the Lyft backed measure which has also received more than $1 million in funding from each Uber, DoorDash and Instacart, argue that it would actually protect driver flexibility and confer benefits including healthcare stipends and paid sick leave. Labor advocates counter that gig workers should already receive such rights under existing laws. So was this is incredibly terrifying because we've actually seen firsthand what happened to app based workers, people in the gig economy in California after the passage of Prop 22, after these companies were able to reclassify them as private contractors. Many of them saw a significant drop in their earnings. Many of them realized that there were certain things that were abusive, for instance, Uber workers, ride share workers weren't getting paid for the time that they were spending in their car. They were only now getting paid for the rides that they were actively giving. So someone had to be in their car, they had to be giving them a ride in order to earn any money at all. And there were all sorts of other downsides to this. And so workers felt like they were swindled, that they were bamboozled into supporting this with the notion of flexibility. But the downsides ended up overwhelming the potential upsides. Um, what are your thoughts on what's happening here? And what do you think we can do to kind of mitigate it, fight back against it and prevent it from spreading across the country? You know, man, what, they, what they're what they so effective at doing and generally this is what companies wanna do is they wanna isolate the workers. They want them to think of themselves as individuals. You're not part of our Uber and Lyft workforce, you're an entrepreneur. You're doing your thing, you need your flexibility. This is your gig, this is the thing that you're doing to fund your real passion. Even though you're putting in hours and hours and hours of work for these companies to profit indiscriminately, right? Um, and that's what they effectively did here in California where a lot of people were like, well, yeah, my Lyft driver said they do like the flexibility. They do like making their own hours. They don't wanna be part of some huge massive workforce because as we know, Anna, if the workers, if the drivers start to think about themselves as one unified workforce, they can collectively shut that thing down and make demands and force concessions. And so of course, they're always gonna frame it as these guys aren't our workers, they're private contractors. Mm -hmm. You know, they work on behalf of themselves, even though they're making these people hundreds of millions of dollars in profit. And so yeah, we saw that work in California. And again, you just gotta watch the framing of the argument here where they're just basically always like, no, 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 no. You guys aren't part of one big Lyft Uber community. You're by yourselves, obviously. You're the next Bill Gates, duh. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and you know, workers unfortunately um, fell for it in California. And it's my hope that Rideshare workers, gig economy workers in other states um, really educate themselves on the ramifications of this kind of uh, predatory behavior, really. Because look, any company, if you just take a step back and look at the motivations through like a materialist lens, 
and, and how the system really works, you can understand what is driving these app based companies to push for this. They're not doing it because they're concerned about the freedom and flexibility of their workers. They're doing it because they want to ensure that they maximize their profits, right? And so here's a perfect example of that. Um, this is a great tweet that shows how the market reacts to this ballot measure in Massachusetts. Tech stocks doing well today, but none as well as Uber and Lyft, which have surged 15 and 18% respectively on news their ballot measure to deny drivers employment passed. So this is actually in response to California and the passage of Prop 22. And so you see that Uber and Lyft obviously increase the value of their shares because investors are like, hmm, Yummy, yummy in my tummy. Like I see what's happening here. We see a future increase in profits, which means a return on our investment. I mean, the markets certainly communicate something here. Yeah, and you gotta understand, you know, what's good for investors, generally speaking, isn't good for the workers of whatever company we're talking about. Every now and again, right, you might get the occasion where oh, we're making ref record profits, record sales, which means the, the workforce is getting record salaries and record benefits. But that's most nine times out of 10, that's not the case. How they're driving revenue is by decreasing costs, by jerking over the workforce. That's that's always the case. And nobody knows this better than Wall Street, than you know, the class of people who are on those boards of corporate raiders who come into companies and gut them limb from limb, and which usually means getting rid of people, slashing salaries, slashing benefits. We know how this works. Like when Wall Street thinks of profits, they're thinking about cutting costs. That's it. And the cost is you, Uber driver, Lyft driver. Exactly, absolutely. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.